Okay, here's example two with related rates. Um, and again, if you want a copy of this uh, worksheet here, check the video description and uh, there will be a link to uh, a place you can go to download this, save it, print it, uh, if you want to follow along. So here's example two. Um, an adventurer rides down a zip line at a speed of 80 miles per hour. If the angle of depression of the zip line is 75 degrees, uh, how fast is the zip liner's altitude changing? Okay. So um, we're going to go back to our general process here. And step one is draw and label a picture if possible. Uh, and it's possible here, right? So um, you know we have a guy here riding down on a zip line, um, and the angle of depression of the zip line is 75 degrees. So um, first, let's draw the ground here. Here's the ground, and uh, the zip line is coming down like this. Okay. And uh, we'll just assume the zip line goes all the way down to the ground. It doesn't actually matter uh, what's happening down here. But um, so the adventurer riding down the zip line somewhere up here, we'll say. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, this distance here will be h, the height. So this will be the height of the zip liner. So we have to label this h um, because you know it's a variable, right? So uh, as the zip liner rides down on the zip line, um, h is going to get smaller. Okay. And this is a right angle here because we measure the height uh, directly, you know, vertically, directly at a right angle from the ground. Um, and this distance here uh, we'll call s. So this will be s. Really, we can call it whatever we want, but we'll just call it s. Um, okay. So angle of depression. Uh, of the zip line is 75 degrees. So what's that mean, angle of depression? So remember from trigonometry, um, the angle of depression uh, is the angle made with the horizontal. So uh, here, this will be the horizontal here. Um, so the angle of depression is going to be this angle in here. All right. So that's the angle of depression there. And it's 75 degrees, we were told. Okay. <clears throat> So um, we have a little bit of fluff here in this picture. So if we want to redraw the picture without all that fluff, um, let's go ahead and do that. So what do we have here that's important? Here's a right triangle, right? Right triangle. So that's kind of the important part here is we have a right triangle. And uh, here's our right angle. This is H. And then this we were going to call S. And then if we have our uh, horizontal up here, uh, this angle here is 75 degrees. OK, so now we have the same picture, but all the fluff is gone now. So we don't really have to do this second picture, but you know, if we just want to make uh, the whole thing easier to see, easier to understand what's going on. Um, all right, that's step one. So step two, using mathematical notation, make a list of what you are given and what you want to know. So what are we given? Um, well, we're given that the uh, adventurer rides down on a zip line at a speed of 80 miles per hour. So that means uh, you know the adventurer is riding down um, on this path here, on this hypotenuse of the right triangle, really, uh, with the speed of 80 miles per hour. So we're given uh, ds dt equals, okay, so uh, why is it ds dt? Because here the uh, adventurer is right, as represents the zip line here, the length of that zip line, um, you know, from the ground to the uh, adventurer. So the adventurer is right about here, writing, or exactly right here, writing uh, down on the zip line. And um, as the adventurer rides down, this distance s is changing, right? So the rate of change of s with respect to time, that's how fast the uh, adventurer is riding down the zip line. And uh, it's going to be negative. Okay, it's actually negative 80. Why is it negative? Because uh, as the adventurer rides down the zip line, s is going to decrease, right? s is the distance between the ground uh, and the adventurer here. Okay, so it's the distance from the ground over here to the adventurer up here. <clears throat> and as the uh, adventurer rides down, the uh, this distance here is going to decrease. <clears throat> Excuse me. So ds dt is negative 80 um, miles per hour. Okay, so that's what we're given. So what do we want to know? What do we want? <clears throat> uh, we want to know how fast is the zip liner's altitude changing. So altitude, that's pretty much just height, right? So how fast is the height changing? Um, and if the height is h, how do we represent the rate of change of the height? Well, that's dh dt. So really, all we just want is dh dt. Um, we don't really want it at a specific time, you know, we just wanted uh, just in general what is dhdt. So that's step two, um, using mathematical notation, make a list of what you're given and what you want to know. So now step three, write down the relevant equations, and again, they'll usually be geometric formulas. So um, what's a relevant equation we could use here? So here we have a right triangle, right? Um, is there some way that we could relate 
uh, H and S to each other um, so that eventually we can use the fact that DSDT is negative 80. Um, well, yeah, think about trigonometry, right? So uh, this angle in here, um, <clears throat> what's the cosine of that angle? So this is a right triangle, right? It's a right triangle. Uh, so that means the cosine of this angle up here is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So cosine of this guy is H divided by S. So what is this guy? Well, this whole angle up here is 90 degrees, right? Because um, this dotted line, that represents the horizontal, and this uh, H is, uh, you know, straight vertical. So right angle up here. Um, so if this is 75 degrees, then this angle in here has to be 15 degrees. Okay, because the whole thing is 90 degrees, and 75 plus 15 is going to give us 90 degrees for the whole thing. So this angle in here has to be 15 degrees uh, inside the triangle here. So that means uh, cosine cosine of 15 degrees equals uh, adjacent, which is H, divided by hypotenuse, which is S. All right. So that's our uh, relevant equation there. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a geometric form. Technically, it's trig, I guess, but it's, uh, it's a geometric thing because it relates to the triangle here. So, you know, the formulas that you use, uh, they're usually going to be geometric. Uh, from geometry, they're going to be geometric, or, you know, they'll be from trig or something like that. But anyway, um, so now step four. Implicitly differentiate both sides of the appropriate equation with respect to time, which means the variable t. So that would be this equation here, right? It's the only one we have. But before we do that, um, let's multiply both sides by s. So then we have, uh, let's say, h equals s times cosine of 15 degrees. Okay, so we'll multiply both sides by s, and then just uh, you know write the other, you know write the right side first, and then the left side after that. So if we multiply both sides by s, cancel, cancel. We have that. Um, so then h equals s times cosine of 15 degrees. So now let's go ahead and take a derivative. All right. So before we implicitly differentiate, uh, in general. You know, that's step four, implicitly differentiate both sides of the appropriate equation with respect to time, which means with respect to the variable t. Um, before you do that, you know, you might want to manipulate the equation a little bit. Um, now, we didn't really have to do this, but it's going to make it much simpler. But, uh, so now, if we take a derivative of both sides with respect to time, what happens? Um, h is really a function of t, right? So the derivative of that with respect to t is just uh, dh dt, right? And then what happens over here? This is s times some constant, right? Cosine of 15 degrees is just some number, just some constant. So we have uh, a function, uh, s is a function of t, and then we multiply by a constant. So we're going to take a derivative of the right-hand side. So um, if you take a derivative of something with a constant multiple, remember the constant multiple just comes out, right? So we're going to have cosine of 15 degrees uh, still there, and then times ds dt. Okay. So remember, we took a derivative of both sides, and cosine of 15 degrees is just a constant multiple here, so it's going to stay there. Okay. So now, uh, it's pretty straightforward from here, right? We want to know dh dt, uh, and we're given ds dt is negative 80. So we just uh, put ds dt into this equation here. So uh, if we come back up here, then dh dt equals cosine of 15 degrees uh, times negative 80. So then we just uh, toss that into a calculator. So dh dt um, is about equal to, and then when you toss this into a calculator, make sure that it's in degree mode and not radians, because uh, if you're in radians, you're going to get something totally different. But anyway, this is about uh, negative 77.274 uh, miles per hour. <coughs> okay. So that's the answer to uh, example two. And if you want to answer it in English, then what you should say is, uh, let's make some room over here. So uh, again, before that, real quick. So dhdt is negative, right? What does that mean? That means h is decreasing. And does that make sense? Uh, yeah, that totally makes sense, right? Because the zip liner, or the adventurer, uh, is riding down the zip line here, um, you know, decreasing, going down towards the ground. So as the zip liner gets closer toward, uh, to the ground, of course, h is going to decrease, right? Because h represents the distance. Um, between the zip liner, the adventurer, uh, and the ground directly below. So as the adventurer gets closer to the ground, of course, h is going to be smaller, right? So uh, it makes sense that dh dt would be negative, because h is decreasing as time goes on. Okay, but uh, again, if we want to answer that in English, then what we would say is uh, the adventurer's altitude 
is uh, decreasing at a rate of uh, 77.274 miles per hour. Or you could say a rate of about, doesn't really matter. But uh, the point here is that, you know, just like in example one, even though uh, the derivative here isn't minus sign on it, when you answer it in English, uh, it's not going to have that. Okay, because this minus sign, it means the quantity is decreasing. Um, but we already mentioned that here when we use the word decreasing, right? So the adventurer's altitude is decreasing at a rate of about 77.274 miles per hour. So again, uh, in mathematical notation, you need the minus sign because that indicates that the quantity is actually decreasing. Okay, dh dt is negative, so that means uh, the rate of change of h is negative, so that means h is decreasing, all right? So we have to have this minus sign here. But um, when we answered in English, you know, we just mentioned decreasing over here. So the adventurer's altitude is decreasing, and how quickly is it decreasing? Oh, at a rate of 77.274 miles per hour. So um, that's example two with related rates.